One of the things that first caught my eye and convinced me to give Bolt a try was the ability to create new custom units of code easily and most importantly within Bolt itself. What I'm talking about here is the creation of super units. These tend to get skipped over in tutorials, but are a great tool to simplify your code and make it more easy to maintain. If you're building a game with Bolt, you should be using super units. No question, no doubt, 100%. If super units are new to you, they are essentially a flow graph that can nest inside a single block which itself is inside another flow graph. Super units can play an analogous role to functions or methods in traditional text-based coding. They can be used to greatly simplify your code in a visual sense, which makes it easier to read, understand, and debug. Because at some point, you're gonna to need to debug code, and you will come back to old code months after you've written it, and looking at 150 units of code that you wrote six months ago with spaghetti connecting and flowing all over the place is challenging at best. The other reason to use superunits is that they can be reused. It's fairly common to need a certain operation over and over again, maybe even on different scripts. Superunits can be copied and reused in any number of flow graphs, and this can save a huge amount of time. Since superunits are just flow graphs, they come in two flavors, that of embedded and macro. In any flow graph, you can right-click to bring up the fuzzy finder and search for superunit. You can then double-click on the superunit to go into the unit and add functionality. Once inside, you'll see an input and output units. We'll talk more about these. You'll also notice that there's breadcrumb navigation at the top of the flow graph window that can take you back to the parent flow graph. That said, in my opinion, super units are the most powerful when they're macros, meaning they exist in your project as a separate file. Doing this means that if you find an error or need to update a super unit, you can do it in just one place and all the instances of the super unit throughout the project will be updated, just like with a normal prefab object. This makes debugging or implementing new features so much easier. You can also easily share a macro with your project collaborators. Having the super unit in your project folders also makes it very easy to drag and drop into other flow macros as you build up your code base. So to create a super unit that is a macro, you simply create a new flow macro in your project folders. In my case, I've created a subfolder just for super units, and I'm calling the super unit for this video vector component add. This super unit is going to be fairly simple in function, but it's something that I find myself doing frequently and requires a decent number of units. And that is adding values to the components of a vector three. In this super unit, I'll have a vector three input. I'll break it into its components, add a value to each component, and then recombine all the components into a new vector and send the value to the output. Opening the super unit macro, rather than adding an event to trigger the code like a normal flow macro, instead, I'm gonna search for input and output in the fuzzy finder and add those units to the flow graph. But do note that there are different input units and you want the input that is in nesting. Next, I want to set up the input parameters. So clicking on the input unit and then working in the graph inspector, I'll first add a control input and give it a key name of enter. It's important to note that the key is used behind the scenes by Bolt to know how to connect the units. The label, on the other hand, is purely cosmetic and can override the key visually. If you change the key, you will break connections. Next, I'll create the value inputs. The first will be a vector three, followed by a float for the X, Y, and Z components. I'll then construct a logic that will break the vector into components and add the corresponding input to each of the components. The last step is to create a new vector 3 from the components of the previous vector. Now I need to create the output parameters. So clicking on the output unit, I'll first add a control output and call it exit. I'll then add a value output, calling it vector 3 output, and assigning the type to be vector 3. Lastly, I'll connect the flow and the vector three to the output. All said and done, the super unit is pretty simple, but it would be pretty ugly if I had to repeat all these units several times in a single flow graph. To test out the super unit, I'll create a new flow macro and call it super unit test. Inside the flow macro, I'll add a start event as well as a vector three literal. I'll assign the value of one comma two comma three to the vector three 
This vector will serve as the input to the vector component add superunit. To add the superunit, all I need to do is drag in the vector component add flow graph from the project folders. I'll connect the flow from the start event as well as the output from the vector literal. Next, I'll create a float literal and connect it to all three of the float inputs of the superunit. I'll also give the float literal a value of 1. To check that the superunit is working correctly, I'll add a debug log unit to print out the result to the console. Pushing play, I can see the vector 2, 3, 4, as expected, printed out to the console, so it's working as planned. I can of course then duplicate the superunit and connect it up to add to the vector once again. Testing this again, I can see the vector 3, 4, 5 printed to the console. Now this is a bit silly, but it does demonstrate how easy it is to use superunits. Let's see if we can take it a step further and make it more useful. If I disconnect the float values and run the code, Bolt will throw an error letting me know that I'm missing an input. I of course could just make sure to have all the inputs connected, or I could go back into the superunit and add default values. Clicking on the input unit and then looking in the graph inspector, I can see a toggle that will allow me to add a default value. I'll check that for all the input values and leave the default value for each at zero. Returning to the parent flow macro, I can see that there are values next to the input nodes. If I change the y value to 5 and press play, I'll get out the vector 2, 8, 4. So there you have it. Super units take a bit of time to make, but they can save a huge amount of time when you're working on a large or more complex project. They can also make your code easier to maintain and to implement new functionality. In my next video, I'll look at using super units to create a system that can allow Bolt to have return values, much like functions in traditional text based coding. This will then lead into a later video that will look at creating an object pooling solution. If you found this video useful or helpful, please think about hitting the subscribe and like buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out a link to my Discord server and Patreon page in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.